welcome to Going Global. I'm your host, Cheong Semi. More than ever before, Korean culture is drawing a worldwide attention. Last month, a special exhibition of Korean manhwas or comics and graphic novels was held in the lobby of Korean Studies Library at the University of Washington in the United States. And this came on a collection was set up as a Korean manhwa bang or a comic room, which was very popular in Korea in the 1970s and 80s. And this special k m o n a collection has a diverse collection of Korean comics by well-known authors such as Lee Hyun-se, Ho Young-man, Park Bong-sung, Ko h e n g s o k and Hwang Min-a. And this place is decorated with a vintage stove heater with lunch boxes stacked on top, a tin pot, black and white TV, some of the items that would bring back the old memories of the good old days. And the Korean culture, not only the modern, but the traditional part, is catching the eye across the world. And it's just amazing to see how Hallyu, or the Korean wave, is spreading to other parts of the world. And I'm very curious to see what kind of an impact it will have next. Now let me introduce you to the first story of Going Global today, and we're going over to the country of passion, Brazil. A lyrical fusion of samba and jazz, that's bossa nova. But what if a Korean sings this Brazilian music? Well, there's a Korean singer who is mesmerized by bossa nova, has gone to Brazil to continue her musical career. What unique touch will this Asian singer add to bossa nova? Let's hear her story now. It's a quiet evening at Ipanema Beach after sunset. From somewhere nearby comes the gentle sound of music. This is singer-songwriter Na h i g y o n g performing bossa nova. Her body moves to the rhythm, and her smooth and gentle voice captures the ears of the audience. Ela canta muito bem, reproduz muito bem, e <laughs> acaba. Até não tendo diferença entre uma cantora brasileira e uma coreana. Na h i g y o n g came to Brazil five years ago after she fell in love with bossa nova. Promoting her album, she sought out local bossa nova musicians. This bossa nova was the first time I went to the place and put my heart into it. I wanted to keep it in my body, to make it naturally, to make it naturally, to make it naturally. Local musicians gradually responded to her soft and delicate voice. Some invited her to their performances, or even helped her produce her album. Ele teve contato comigo e foi lá no meu estúdio, né? E eu tinha recebido um, uma gravação dela, música dela, fez de fazer. Aí mostrei para ela, se você gostar, ela falou, eu quero. Aí veio no estúdio e nós gravamos, né? E parece que a música foi feita para ela. Na is now known as Korea's first-generation bossa nova singer. Traveling back and forth between Korea and Brazil, she is actively promoting her music career. 새로운 콜라보레이션을 많이 개발하고 싶은 마음이 있어요. 그리고 개인적으로는 어, 제가 보사 노바 초기 보사 노바에 완전히 꽂혔거든요. 그래서 이 부분을 저는 유지해 나가고 싶어요. Na is currently working on her fourth album. She will continue to enrich her music until she touches the hearts of many more people around the world. Did you enjoy her lovely music? Well, I certainly did. The rhythm of bossa nova is perfect to enjoy when spring is in the air. As Na h i g y o n g travels back and forth between Korea and Brazil to continue her music, we hope to see her become one of the greatest bossa nova singers in the world. Now, one of the top countries for startups in the world, we're going over to Israel. With strong financial support from the country, such as startup support centers, Israel is giving lots of opportunities to people with startup dreams. For example, a two-year-old enterprise is gaining a lot of attention after it developed a special device that can detect 
cancer by connecting it to a smartphone. Isn't that amazing? Well, let's find out how startup dreams are coming true in Israel. This is a company in downtown Tel Aviv that produces a portable device that helps detect cancer. This startup company founded only two years ago used smartphones to pave their way to the global market. The company's made product is the special microscope. By connecting it to a smartphone and starting the cancer detecting application, you're ready to go for a cancer screening. You simply take a picture of your body part suspected of cancer using the microscope. The device will then capture any signs of anomalies, such as white spots or thicker tissues, and diagnose cancer right away. Yeah, it was great to, to be able to get the results straight away and not have to wait a couple of days or a week and have another consultation with a, with a specialist. It was great to just get the results immediately. The mobile microscope costs around 30,000 Korean won. With its benefit of easily detecting cancer, the device is already being sold in more than 10 countries in Europe and South America. Three people in their 30s, Ariel Beery and his two colleagues, developed the product. The company was able to succeed in just two years thanks to the help of the Library Tel Aviv, a startup support center in the city. It gives startups the ability to sit and work together. Mobile ODT did that very well. We worked with uh, volunteers and with new employees to develop new concepts that would finally end up in, in this product. The library is located in the heart of downtown Tel Aviv. The building was previously used as a public library, but four years ago it was transformed into a space for starting entrepreneurs. Currently, the library provides a shared working space for 15 startup companies in various sectors, such as IT, fashion, and the arts. The city of Tel Aviv was very generous to kind of offer the space for startups like ours um, to spend a few months in. Here are other entrepreneurs, we can feed off each other, um, learn from each other's mistakes. The library is operated with Tel Aviv's financial support. Any team that applies and is considered suitable after idea screening can earn a slot in the library. The monthly fee is about 80,000 Korean won per person. The space also offers the users unlimited Wi-Fi access and various services for free, such as getting startup investment. We have a non-stop waiting list. We don't even um, advertise that we're opening a new wave of startups. Um, it's just really known in the startup community as being this incredibly nurturing um, and great space. Oftentimes, the startup entrepreneurs here will gather in groups and have discussions. They may specialize in different fields, but they constantly share their ideas on their products and business operations. The library also hosts a regular event where they invite successful startup entrepreneurs to share their know-hows. More than 60 startups benefited from the library over the last four years. About 70% of them launched their businesses successfully. It's like a university, mini university, but without actually going to the university, but working on your stuff because you the things that you experience, the things that you learn are just uh, priceless. There are 45 startup support centers like the library in Tel Aviv alone, and more than 5,000 all over Israel. The municipality's active support for startups is laying the foundation for Israel to become the best startup nation in the world. As there are a lot of global companies that have succeeded with innovative ideas and hard work, we hope to see startup entrepreneurs in Israel produce fruitful results in the future. Now, we've all at one point in our lives had problems or concerns that seem to have no solutions whatsoever. And at times like that, it really helps if you talk to someone who has similar problems you may end up finding just the right solution. In Singapore, there is a popular online radio broadcast that listens to the stories of young Koreans living abroad and helps find solutions to their problems. Let's take a look. 27-year-old Lee has been living in Singapore for three years. Her biggest concern these days is choosing a career. She recently sent her story to Gea Kelsing Center, an online radio broadcasting in Singapore run by Koreans. Singapore 
The show first started in December last year and is run as a podcast. Just like the name of the show, it was created to share even the smallest concerns or troubles. The show was successful from the start with its stories that the young listeners could relate to. It's gaining more popularity as the number of listeners reached over 300 in just five episodes. The podcast is run by a group of young volunteers. They all have different jobs, including a broadcasting producer and a banker. They meet every weekend to discuss their show, which goes on the air twice a month. 방향성을 제시해 주고 제시할 수 있다는 거에 대해서 좀더 의의를 두고 싶고요. 어떤 이런 고민이 왔을 때 서로 나눌 수 있는 소통의 창구가 됐으면 좋겠다라는 생각. The show listens to all kinds of worries, big or small, and helps find solutions. It's becoming an outlet where young Koreans living overseas can find comfort and support. Now, let's head over to New Zealand. New Zealand, with its wonderful natural environment, might not be the first country we associate with the winter sport, ice hockey. But a young player from Korea is showing his talent in the national ice hockey team of New Zealand. Let's meet Chong Eun Sang, who is chasing his dreams to become a world-class ice hockey player. The players speed over the ice, aggressively tackling each other to control the puck. Among these relatively bigger players, one athlete stands fearlessly on the ice. It's Chung Eun Sang, who plays for New Zealand's under-20 ice hockey team. You can see all the bodies flying around. It's very fun, very beautiful. Chung started playing ice hockey when he was 12. To treat his asthma, he tried all kinds of sports, including swimming and soccer, but he quickly got tired of them. But ice hockey was different. I think winning is what's worth playing and being around with friends and those moments that you have together, I think that's worth playing the sport. Although he started playing ice hockey by chance, his potential soon started to shine. In 2012, he became the first overseas Korean to be selected for New Zealand's under-16 national ice hockey team. He even received the most sportsmanlike award twice from the Auckland Ice Hockey Association. Chung is now in Auckland's under-20 ice hockey team and has been the captain for two years. He's good at passing, good at shooting. He knows where to be at the right time. He always comes back, helps the D out. It's, yeah, this is great. Chung's skills come from his hard work as well as his natural talent. He tried hard to overcome the stereotype that Asians are physically weak by doing personal training besides official team training. On days when there's no training, he watches international professional ice hockey games to monitor and analyze their strategies. Uh, because uh, he showed commitment to ice hockey, he's a very nice uh, person, I, he is very coachable. I really like uh, to work with him because he's listening always. Chung's strongest supporters are his family. At first, his parents were worried about their youngest son playing a tough sport and that he might get injured. But they became his avid supporters after learning his passion for ice hockey. Uh, I'm a person who is 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 he would also like to participate in the 2018 Winter Olympics in Pyeongchang, Korea. I'd love to represent New Zealand in the Winter Olympics. I think it'll be a lot of fun, good experience. Whenever Chung feels stressed or dejected, he says that thinking of ice hockey makes him feel better. Until the day he plays on the world stage, he will continue to chase his dream, speeding over the ice.
Recently, a couple in northern England won a million pounds in the lottery for a second time. And they actually beat the odds of more than 283 billion to one. Isn't that amazing? Well, I hope our viewers are also struck by that luck of 283 billion to one this week. Well, I'll be back next week with more interesting and exciting stories. Till then, stay healthy. See you next time. Bye-bye.